West Indies cricket will cease to exist as an entity if its best players are not representing the regional team, yet still at the same time are playing T20 franchise cricket all over the world. Those are the views of the Brands Lara Committee that was set up to review West Indies performance, embarrassing performance at the T20 World Cup in Australia, or some would say lack of it. The committee have put forward their findings and have made some recommendations. I will be going through some of that report. No one expect us to go through the entire report, but I've picked out some salient points, which I think I agree with them, and I would like to go through them. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cricket Forum. Thank you for tuning in. Please slash a like on the video, share, and subscribe. Click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Now the report is out. I do not want us to get carried away by the report as yet. For in August 17, 2020, Don Webby submit a report and Skerritt said, we cannot ignore the fact that this is the fifth external governance review of its kind within the past 13 years. As we set about the process of understanding, accepting and implementing the Webby report. That's what he said on August 17, 2020. Now, none of those recommendations from the Webby report have been implemented up to this date. And it has been the fifth report and governance structure and the review of the governance structure of Cricket West Indies. To the best of my knowledge, the recommendations of the previous four reports have not been implemented either. I heard Skerritt recently saying that he will be putting forward some recommendations at the annual general meeting in March and hope to get segment of the Webby report implemented. One of the sticking block in the Webby report, I believe, is the fact that the report recommends that the number of directors in West Indies cricket should be cut from 12 to five. As the structure presently stand, two directors from each of the six region in West Indies cricket sits on the board as director. If that is cut from six to five, it means therefore, even if they choose one from each region, then there's a region would be left without a director and cricket West Indies board. And I think that's where the politics comes in and why a number of these reports and recommendations are not implemented because persons are not prepared to give up the power in the best interests of West Indies cricket. So we look forward to that annual general meeting in March to see, as Kerrit said, if the recommendations that he put forward from the Webby report, if there will be a resolution. I brought that up because this recent report from the Brian's Lara Committee is not so much a government, a governance review report. It's a report and a specific performance, or as some say, lack of performances at the T20 World Cup in Australia last year. So one of the points, and one of the points is starting that I would like in this report is the panel said, West Indies cricket will cease to exist as an entity if the best players in the region 
represented only on an optional basis while featuring in all T20 leagues. It's instructive that they use the word all, all T20 leagues. While our best players are never injured, when the T20 franchises season comes around, like the IPL, which is the biggest spinning one, I hardly ever heard of a West Indian cricketer being injured during the IPL. And so the report is saying that all T20 leagues, our players are always available for the T20 leagues all around the world. But yet still, they represent the region, the West Indies team, only on an optional basis. It's an, it's an extensive report. And I know some of you would have gone through the report but I just want to go through it in chrono chronological order here. So if you are going to make your comment about the report, please do so in the order in which I'm going so that we can have a lively discussion and we do not go ahead of the program. And this is true that the committee is talking. We do not have to call names of the players or play or player who oh, it appears that he's always injured and have an issue with cricket West Indies when it comes to represent West Indies. But yet still, these players are never injured when they are playing their T20 franchise cricket. The untimely exit of the West Indies team from the ICC T20 World Cup bears certain similarities to a disaster albeit one without fatal consequences. This is stern. You know, when I think of a disaster, I think of earthquakes and hurricanes and roofs and buildings being flattened and life lost. And the committee is comparing our early exit, our embarrassing exit, from the T20 World Cup to a disaster, but it doesn't a matter, it doesn't take life. That's the only thing that separates our performances, our exit from the World Cup, except the fact it doesn't take life, but it was a disaster. These are harsh terms. They also believe that the team was underprepared for the World Cup with most having negligible experience of playing in Australia or playing top flight cricket in Australia, the absence of a camp in Australia, the CPL that look a meaningful impact on the team's preparation. So they are saying that the matches in Australia were playing Hobart, where it was wet and cold. And we did not have a camp in Australia because the team leave directly from the CPL and went to Australia. I remember quite well that the Cricket West in this team after the CPL final, I remember quite well, we were all at the airport together. Those players who were heading off to Australia and I, we were at the airport together in Guyana just after the CPL and they were heading directly to Australia. The committee is saying that the lack of preparation, we should have gone to Australia and become acclimatized because it was wet and cold and coming from the Caribbean where it was hot and with most of these players, have little or no experience in top flight cricket in Australia, the team was under prepared. So though John P. Nicol, good afternoon, how are you? All of the previous reports call for restructuring of the board. These guys will not give up the power. They currently own. I agree with you, John P. That's a very, very sad thing. 
because they don't want to give up the power that they currently have. But let's see how many of this report, which is really a report on performance and preparing the team. Let's see if they will finally have the political will to implement some of these things. The good thing about, one of the good things about this report is that it set out standards. It set out some things that are actionable. And we will see if they will action them. Even if they do not action them 100%, if they revise some of them, because nothing wrong with revising some of them, but we will be able to measure and to see how many of them they action. Now, Ed Meyer's absence in Australia was significant loss to the batting unit. It's entirely understandable for players to maximize their earnings. It warned that this could not come at the detriment of West Indies cricket. So the report is saying that Ed Myers and at least Narine and Russell too, as players who should have been in that World Cup squad. And it clearly states that Ed Myers absent affect the team batting in Australia. Now that is an issue that Cricket West Indies need to manage. Human beings have different ego. They have different characters. They have different mannerism. And an entity like Cricket West Indies must have expert to able to manage Hetmeyer. It spoke of Russell and Narine, two players who are key components to T20 franchise teams all over the world. Yet still, West Indies, Cricket West Indies cannot reach a middle ground with these players so that the best players are on the team. And that is why, one of the reasons why it said that if Cricket West Indies' best players are not playing, the best players are not playing for the West Indies, the team West Indies will cease to exist as an entity. These are strong words coming from the committee. Greetings, Zakaria Ali. Why can't we have people with the insight and intelligence of Laura running Cricket West Indies? That's a question that we may never be able to answer. But the politics of leading the West Indies is more rife than the politics of the Prime Minister or the President in your country. Cricket West Indies politics is a serious thing. It, it goes beyond what we can imagine. Disagree, Hetmeyer wouldn't make any difference to the World Cup squad. Akeem Alain, and that's the beauty of this community. We are always able to express our opinion. And I'm not here saying that Hetmeyer would make a difference. Maybe I am of the same opinion as you. But in the report, it said that Ed Meyer would have made a difference. And I'm sure those persons who put forward the report knows that some of us don't agree with everything that they have said. Fine, Akeem Alain. Well done. I like your point. I agree. I agree West Indies have no human resource manager. And that is one of their biggest problems. An entity like Cricket West Indies, without a human resource manager, and still talking about that they have money in the bank, is disgraceful. Why? Because money in the bank is good. But the product is the players. And if you develop the players, the players will produce more money because people are going to buy the product. So having money in the bank and can't pay a human resource manager to motivate an inspired 
and meet the players halfway makes no sense to me. And the report spoke about, I think, a, a consultant, a performance consultant, or something to that effect, a psychologist or so on. The report spoke about that in the same sphere, sphere of a human resource manager. It went on to say, it is imperative that the board and the players have a frank and honest discussion with each other in order to arrive at a solution to this impasse. Everyone will agree with this statement. For in every activity, in every structure, in every sphere of society, there must be some agreement without those who administered and those who actually do the hands-on work. And in this case, we have the administrators and we have the product, which are the cricket, the cricketers. So there must be some discussion. What I want to know though, is that after this discussion, after they come to an agreement and the players do not fulfill the agreement that they sat around a table and come to, what are the punishments? Because there must be deterrence. There must be punishment. Whether it's suspension, whether it's pay cut, whether it's a letter of warning or something. If you, are, uh, if you agree to do something and you do not do it, what will be the consequences of you not doing it? There must be consequences if you do not do it, especially if you sat around the table and reach that objective. No objection certificate cannot be weaponized against the players. In this, they are saying that players should not be denied no objection certificate. And this is going to be a big controversy, this one, because no objection certificate should not be weaponized. But it is essential that some middle ground is arrived at. Otherwise, West Indies cricket may cease to exist as an entity. Now, the report is saying that the players should not be denied NOC. But at the same time, the report is saying that the players should not see playing for West Indies as an option but it should be mandatory. I do not really know where the middle ground lies. And in a previous show, I spoke about the season, windows, and maybe that's what it will come down to. The ICC may need to set up clear windows for T20 franchise cricket and clear windows for international cricket. And they need to act on this very fast because if they do not act on this very fast, international cricket is going to suffer because the players are going to maximize their earning. And I, and I am convinced that the ICC need to act and act fast on this one. They need to set up clear windows that differentiate international cricket from franchise cricket there's a lot of politics and favoritism in this cricket team it is it has always been i believe that cw and the players have contracts but the players are just too damn lazy and powerful and they call the shots that is what is wrong with west indies cricket i support those comments i support those comments I had no issue with the teams like South Africa, Pakistan, and the West Indies losing in the World Cup. It only expand the growth of cricket long term. Akeem Alain, I, I got your point. You're, you're saying that when these teams lose in the World Cup, it expand cricket. When more associate members are beating this team, it is showing that the game is growing. You may end to a good point there, Akeem. You may be onto a good point. 
although Zachariah Ali disagree with you. So keep the banter going in the chat. That's very good. West Indies has a golden opportunity to hit the reset button ahead of the, text, the next T20 World Cup in 2024. The next T20 World Cup in 2024 will be held in the West Indies and the USA. And that is the only reason why, cricket, why the West Indies will not have to be playing in the qualifying round. The review group has put in place short-term, medium-term, and long-term goals to facilitate the strategic plan for the West Indies to go forward. And this is what I'm very impressed about. I'm very impressed about it. They put things on the table. Now, this one, I would have said this in the past, and I've done a complete video on this one almost three months ago, immediately, I think, after we were eliminated from the World Cup. I have said it. Not in these terms, but you could look back at the video on the home page, and you will see that I have discussed this already. Cricket West Indies, this is the opinion this is one of the short-term goals that the committee had put forward cricket west indies will shortlist 30 to 35 players from which the nucleus of 15 for the world cup can be picked but to ensure all the best players make themselves available the group wants cwi to host a three-day retreat so the one requesting this to identify anywhere between 30 to 35 players and those players would form the large group from which the 15 for the world cup will be chosen and they before anything happened after cricket west indies select these 35 players they want a round table they suggest that there's a round table meeting not a meeting where the directors are on a platform and the players are down in the audience. They think that it should be a round table meeting with all the stakeholders and everything should be trashed out right there and some agreements come to and the players should say whether they are available or not and all the terms work out. That is good management. That is good management. But as I say, what are the contingencies when these players, what are the deterrent when these players do not full their, fulfill their part of the agreement? Because remember, you know, although you're not weaponizing NOC, if Cricket West Indies suspend a player, that player may not be able to play T20 franchise cricket unless Cricket West Indies say the suspension is only from playing for West Indies. But if it is an international ban, that player will not be able to play. So where are the deter deterrents? Where are the deterrents? What is going to be put in place to ensure that Cricket West Indies fulfill their side of the bargain while the players fulfill their side of the bargain? And that is why my, this is why my tiger said that Lara and his, co and his committee have picked the West Indies test team. They believe that these players should be playing test cricket. They believe Evan Lewis, Nicholas Puran, Akir Hussain, Odin Smith, Shimran Etmaya, Shay Ope or Shai Ope, Brandon King, and Ravman, Tawe, Ravman Powell should play test cricket against Australia and Pakistan at least. They are actually picking the squad. Do you agree with that squad? No, we are going to play pakistan and australia before the next world cup next year and they are saying that these players should play test cricket we know long ago a number of you in this committee in this community have said it many times i agree with it i have said it that the players that the countries who dominate t20 cricket are the countries with the best test players we see barbarazam dominating test cricket and he also dominate t20 we see ben stokes we see virat kohli we see Roy sharma all of these guys play test cricket and they dominate t20 cricket the committee is on to something when it requests that these players play more red ball cricket to develop the basic of the game i don't think anyone in this community disagree with the point 
Whether these cricketers should be automatically selected for the test team is another thing. But no one, I think, will disagree with the point of the committee. It will disagree with the opinion of the committee that these players should play more red ball cricket. When West Indies is not playing cricket, do they have practice sessions to keep the players sharp? Those players who are not involved in cricket are usually asked to turn up at like Sabina Park, Queen's Park Oval and train. That's the retainer players. Whether you're a West Indies retainer player or whether you are a regional retainer player, that means you are retained by the Windwards or the Lee Wards or Guyana or Jamaica, they usually turn up at their own field and train. There are usually things planned for them, those who are retained. They usually also invite in some players who are on the fringe, who are not retained, but they still invite them in to train. So yes, they do have training session when West Indies is not playing. But again, most of our top players are usually all over the world playing T20 cricket. I have information that one player from Jamaica, I won't call his name because I have nothing against the player. And, I, and sometimes when you call players' name, people think that you diss them. But I'm not dissing anyone. But I have information that one player, from the time he came back to the, from the Abu Dhabi T10, he have not reported to Sabina Park for one training session. No, what is the punishment for something like that? That's what I'm saying. What is the punishment for something like that? Are you going to suspend the player? Are you going to warn the player? Are you going to reduce their retainer salary? There must be something in place. From the player return from the Abu Dhabi T10, until that player leave for a franchise cricket earlier this year, earlier this month, he did not turn up to Sabina Park to trade. I do not always agree with you. I do not always agree with you, but it is fine these players should not be in the tour to Zimbabwe, Older Brooks, Bonner, Roach, and Blackwood. There is an interest in those other sports because our cricket is poor. If we are a successful cricket team, if we are a successful cricket team, there will be more interest in our sports. And if you were at Treasure Beach over the weekend, I agree. I agree with the names the committee put forward 100%. I agree with them too, John P. Nicol, but my argument, should they be automatically picked in our test team, in our test squad? I agree that they should play more red ball cricket. But what the committee is saying, I think it is 10 names that they listed. And they are saying that these players should play against Pakistan and Australia. I don't think that I will necessarily agree with that position. Virat Kohli is about to beat Sachin record for the most runs. Why should, why should our players have the authority to call the shots? CWI needs to fix that. I agree with you 100%, Ali. You are on the ball today. You are firing. So this is the squad. This is the player. Puran Lewis, Akil Hussain, Odin Simit, Shimran Etmaya, Shea O, Brandon King, and Ravman Powell should play test cricket against Australia and Pakistan at least. At least, you know. They didn't say we are recommend. They didn't say, I think, or, well, they say they recommend at least and these are 10 players so what about the chanda paul and what about the Bratwaite and what about the joseph and that's my point so i don't think necessarily that they should be nominating a team for the west indies selectors but i get the point i get the point that these guys need to play more red ball cricket to develop the basic of the group of the game they went on to say it is this group considered view Consider deliberate. The selectors should be encouraged, if not mandated, to always select the best 11, 13 players for the West Indies team in all format. Are they eating out against the Russell, the Narine, and the Etmire who did not make the Australian team tour, test, World Cup? Or are they eating out against the general selection policy of Cricket West Indies? Because you and I know that that team that is selected for Zimbabwe is not the best team in the region. You and I know that 
that team smack of favoritism. And while I will support them, at this time, it does not prevent me from stating the obvious. I will support the players who have, who are, who have selected for Zimbabwe. Although I know that some of them should not be there. But in the end, it's the West Indies team, and I have to support it. If I was picking the team, I would not have picked those players. I have said it in my previous video. There are four players who I would not have selected. But is this committee saying that generally the selectors are not doing a good job to select the West Indies squads? Or are they specifically referring to the World Cup? It is very interesting to know what they are especially referring to. One selected the owners would then be on the players to determine whether they will make themselves available with an agreed upon time frame. I, this part to me is bullshit. You can't be using the word mandate and at the same time saying players should determine whether they are going to make themselves available. I do not understand. It cannot be mandate and then players determine if they are available. This is a challenge that we are having. The power goes back to the players again. And we cannot run a structure where the players have the power. Their rights should be respected. They should be applauded and they should be, should be, should, they should be treated as stars. Because if they are performing well, they are stars. And they should be treated like this. But it can't be that they have the power to determine whether they are available or not, when they are available. There must be a line drawn. People must be cut off. It's either you're going to represent West Indies or you're not going to represent West Indies. There must be a line drawn in the sand. You cannot represent West Indies as you like. You cannot see representing West Indies as an option. It must be your loyalty. And while I would like to make it understand that it is important that these players earn as much as they can because their time of playing sport is very short at the highest level. But players cannot determine. I cannot name, for example, X. And X is going to wait another week or two to tell me if he's available. No, X must tell me that he's available at the meeting. And X must tell me that I'll be available for A, B, C, Y tour. But I will not be available for double X, Y, Z tour. That's how it must go. It can't be when I name you, you said you are not available. I must know from day one, just like the whereabouts rule, I must know from day one how many series are you available for. So when I select you, you must turn up for those series. It can't be that I select you and then you tell me no. We must come to an agreement even before the selection is made. Please remember to slash a like on the video, share, and subscribe. Brandon King should replace should replace Blackwood, Brooks, or Banner. In other team organization, if the people in charge make such horrible decision over and over again, they get fired. But with West Indies, the selectors can keep picking nonsense squad and still keep their job. Thank you, Ali. Why they don't give Aiden Walsh Jr. a chance to shine? No one in CWI is held responsible. That is so true, Ali. It appears that no one is held responsible. So the Don Webby report, which came out two years ago, from 2020, now three years, almost three years, it has not been implemented. Now that Skerritt is leaving in March, 
He's saying that he's going to bring recommendation to the annual general meeting in March when he's leaving. What that tells you, as someone said in the chat, because he's leaving, he can now give up the power. He can now recommend that the power be given up. But if, we, if he was still going to be there, would he be bringing these resolution, these recommendations to the annual general meeting? Please slash a like on the video, share and subscribe, and click on the links in the video description and support those entities that are supporting the Cricket Forum. Thank you all for tuning in. Carlton, I disagree with you. It's okay for the players to be treated the way Andre Russell was treated. Is it okay for the players to be treated the way Andreas was treated? Colonial mentality from you, sir. Okay, John, John P., those are your opinion. I don't quite understand what you are saying. Those languages are probably bigger than me. I don't understand. Any, every team selector select, it will be always a big problem. Good work, selected. Okay, St. Elmore Alls. And that's what this community is all about. Different opinions. And without these different opinions, this community will cease to exist. So it's these different opinions where we can express ourselves that make this community so dynamic. John P. I honestly do not get the point you are making. Send me an email and let us discuss it. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Please slash a like on the video, share and subscribe. Have a great day everyone. One love.